Good evening, everyone. I'm Chris Pratt. And I'm Elizabeth Banks, and we are both very excited to say... Welcome, welcome to, to the, the Graham Norton Show! Show. Appreciate the warm welcome because isn't it cold? <gasps> oh, it's ever so chilly. I hope you're all coping with the freezing conditions. Sadly, police have already reported horrific incidents of people falling badly on the ice. Yes. <laughs> Poor Gemma there on the show collapsing on ice. Uh, <laughs> what I really like is a professional partner just going, I could catch you, but no. <laughs> you're on your own. What a week it's been! Oh, the worst Arctic weather in years has hit us, and we're facing a cliff edge, apocalyptic Brexit. But on the plus side, dry January finished. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> like anyone did it. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, some people really need a drink. Yeah, get it down, you love. <laughs> this week, uh, Theresa May won her latest Commons showdown, and she's now got a mandate to go back to the EU and reopen negotiations. Oh, they'll be delighted, won't they? Fräulein Merkel, she's amazed here to see you again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, meanwhile, in the United States, the longest government shutdown in history has ended, and it's back to business as usual, which is a relief. I mean, those immigrant children aren't going to lock themselves in cages, are they? No. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> busy, busy, busy. Uh... But, hey, you think it's cold here. In the States, they're suffering a record freezing weather. I mean, some places, temperatures have gone down as low as minus 54 degrees. I mean, to give you an idea of how cold that is, scientists say that would theoretically be cold enough to freeze a Russian prostitute's urine before it hits the president's face. <laughs> Winning comedian who's given us some of our best of characters from the fast show, Harry and Paul. Now he's taking the stage in Only Fools and Horses, the musical. Please welcome Paul Whitehouse. Oscar winner shot the fame with the cult classic Labyrinth and went on to star in the likes of A Beautiful Mind, Blood Diamond and Requiem for a Dream. Now she brings us the fantasy epic Alita Battle Angel. Welcome for the first time, Jennifer Connelly! <laughs> Two of the stars of the new Lego movie. She's a director, producer, and star of blockbusters such as The Hunger Games and Pitch Perfect. It's Elizabeth Banks, everyone! Hey! And he's the star of films like Guardians of the Galaxy, Jurassic World, and Avengers Infinity War, and one of our favorite guests. It's a warm welcome back to Chris Pratt! Hey! Lovely to see you all. Welcome back, Chris. Welcome back, Thank Paul. Thank you. Uh, now, Elizabeth and Jennifer, you've never been before. No. no. There's so many people. <laughs> a lot of people. Oh. Well, it's cold outside. Uh, you know, <laughs> a mild night. It's empty. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, uh, and Paul, of course, you're the lone Brit flying the flag. Shall I do a trade deal while I'm here? <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Somebody better, <laughs> aren't they? Uh, you should keep talking, though, because Elizabeth... You really like the English accent, don't you? I... Yes, that's, that is true. I, I, I think the English accent is rather sexy, yeah. There you go, Paul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I do, too. So you obviously do. Yes, you do. Are you married a British accent? I, I did. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like if you read the phone book to me in a British accent, 
coming off. I can do a British accent. <laughs> Who's got a phone book? <laughs> but Jennifer, you do. You live with uh, Paul Bettany. I do. Yes. And, but, you know, but apparently, he finds things funny that you don't understand him finding funny. Yeah. Well, you know, we speak the same language, but the words have different meanings. You know, like. For example, my family, a lot of the people in my family, my cousins are in the garment business and they make, they make khaki pants. You know, it's like their big staple of their industry is khaki pants, which my husband thinks is just hysterical. It is quite funny. But what do we call? Tell them what khaki what? pants Why are. Khaki Why pants? are khaki pants funny? Well, right, exactly. you should wash your khaki pants. <laughs> You don't have to wash your khaki pants, do you? No, your khaki pants. You should probably wash khaki pants. I heard yeah. something that you guys think is funny is you've ever heard of Kenny Rogers Roosters? The yeah. The the uh, the chicken Chicken's restaurant. Chicken restaurant, yeah. Well, that's it's... pretty funny, right? Kenny Rogers Roosters. Um, oh, I yeah. oh, I get it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, it's supposed to be funny. Yeah. I guess not. You <laughs> <laughs> lied to me. Yeah. Who told you that? Yeah. You're not set up, friend. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Go on the show and say this. Yeah. <laughs> Really killed, Rich. <laughs> but now, are you familiar with Paul Whitehouse's work? Have you seen his shows over the years? No. In a word. Oh. <laughs> Look, <laughs> silent C. <scene. laughs> yeah. I've, I've heard. Oh, you've heard? Yes, I've, I've heard. I've heard there's lots of impressions. Well, well I wouldn't go that far. The characters. Well, no, so yes. you, yeah, you characters. do characters. It's about three, really. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's, you've gotten really famous good. off of exactly three characters? Three, yeah, about three. That's pretty yeah. amazing. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, he, you've done loads. But they're all, but I didn't realize they're all mostly kind of based on people you've met or known. Well, uh, some are. I mean, my, my old Roly Birkin, the guy who really can't speak properly. Yeah, him. There oh, yeah, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I met him when I was fishing in Iceland, and uh, he, could, he couldn't get a sentence out. <laughs> 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 okay. yeah. That bloody actor fellow. I went, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he had, he had a sort of attack dog with him, uh, a really posh woman. He said, no, speak properly! Speak properly! Nobody can understand you! <laughs> and, uh, I, this guy, you know, would hold court at the dinner table for hours. Nobody knew what he was talking about. And he was a godsend at the time, because we were doing the fast show. I needed a new character, and I didn't have to learn anything. <laughs> <laughs> I just go, I'm a Cairo. Poisonous <laughs> 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 monkeys. <laughs> and so, yeah. <laughs> I was very, very drunk. <laughs> <laughs> he was a godsend, yeah. <laughs> are there any of your catchphrases? Because you, you are good at English accents. Oh. You are. are he there... has a, you have a decent English. Oh, like you. an Essex accent yeah. that's a Wait, little are, more Are there any, are there any less catchphrases harsh. that you think Chris could do? Well, well, one of our most popular ones, probably not very politically correct, so we'll do it. Yeah, yeah. that sounds right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I did a, 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 a tailor with a guy called Mark Williams, and we used to... We were very over-familiar. Say hello, sir. Try that. Say it again. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Were you out with a lady last night, sir? Oh, did you want it, sir? Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> sir. Oh. <laughs> you know, do that. Do that. Were you out with a lady last night, sir? Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> suits you, sir. Oh, oh. Did she want it, sir? Did she want it, sir? <laughs> oh, <laughs> suits you, sir. Back to you. <laughs> Was it a lady, though, sir? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, was it a lady, though, sir? <laughs> oh! Oh! Hey, he's got a job. Hey. Hey. <laughs> well, uh, Chris, he put you on the hey, spot there, didn't he? Yeah. Well done, mate. Oh. Very good. <laughs> Kenny Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Right. Right. I just got it. Uh, <laughs> Rich, you piece of shit. Now, our first film tonight is... Uh, it stars the voices of Chris Pratt and Elizabeth Banks. It's The Lego Movie 2. It comes out next Friday the 8th. And, I mean, this was gonna happen, cos that first movie... I mean, it did incredibly well, didn't it? Yeah, it was really... It did really well. It was, and, and, you know, people really loved it, and it also was very successful. So, it was tough, because I don't know if you guys... Did you guys see The Lego Movie, the first movie? Any yes! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Looking at the figures, everyone saw the first movie. <laughs> well, it's kind of it's tricky because at the end of the first movie, we break down the fourth wall, and you realize the whole movie is sort of inside the head of this young man and or this young boy, Finn. And you think to yourself, like, how can you 
how can you do a sequel to that? You know, it's, it's, it's really tough. We painted ourselves into a corner and, and the expectations are really high. Well, I think we really have met or exceeded those expectations and it's, it's, it's just really good. So it's a relief that people want this movie to be good, but unlike a lot of sequels, this one actually is really good. No, it is. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're back as Emmett and you're back as, as Lucy. So what, what, what is happening in this movie? Well, you know, at the end of the first movie, um, the Duplo, and I don't know if everyone remembers, but the Duplo come down and they're like, we want to play too now. <laughs> and yeah. that's so we, we explore what it means for the little sister, Finn's obvious little sister, to come into his life, want to play with his toys, yeah. and what will happen when the toys leave the basement, yes. right? And go to the Sistar system, get it? Um, Got it. The yeah. Sistar system. Yeah. <laughs> and what that means for, for them to play. And, and it's a real, um, where the first movie was about a father son relationship or a parental relationship, this one's about a sibling relationship. And uh, Elizabeth, you look like you really, you like doing the voice work. I do like doing the voice work. I think yeah. You posted a picture of yourself, and look, you're really good. Look at that. Like, yeah. shoes off. I always take my shoes off, yeah. I went to drama school, and we, I don't know, we used to, we used to want to get, like, feel the earth under us or something. <laughs> You're a serious actress. You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, we, yeah, uh, look, it doesn't look to you. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Jennifer, uh, yeah, you yeah, won an Oscar. So we get to be really, really physical when we're doing it, you know, more, more so than, you know, frankly, like, I don't want to be wearing these things all the time. So when I get to take them off and be barefoot, it's really helpful to me to also I punch and I kick my character. Lucy's a real badass. Yes. Ass kicker, master builder. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. we do a lot of physical stuff. It's true. You know, punching and all of that. So I, I like to be barefoot when I do it. Paul, do you do, do voice work. Do you enjoy it? No, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I really do, I hate it. Because it seems like, the, not, no sure. offence, the easiest job in the world. Uh, sure. You know. <laughs> you, know you don't have to get up Yeah, what, like yours isn't, anything. sit there asking a few questions. Second easiest job. And he's drinking as well. <laughs> Uh, listen, we've got a clip. Uh, this is Emmett showing Lucy around his Lego dream house. This is my vision of the future. Ta-da! A house? Come on, let me give you the tour. Very first one on the cul-de-sac. This is the living room, where you can live it up. <laughs> TV room, dining room, planties room, kitty cat room. And out back, a double-decker porch swing, so we can always hang together. What do you think? It's going to attract aliens and get destroyed. I just thought we could rebuild the future, make everything awesome again. <sighs> Emmett, you gotta stop pretending everything is awesome. It isn't. Every morning you walk through town singing that terrible, annoying, manufactured pop song. <laughs> that song really seems to upset you. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> You were coming on that show. That song, uh, Everything is Awesome. Yes. It was nominated for an Oscar. Yeah. yeah it's a pretty highbrow song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, the kind of work we do yeah. in the Lego franchise. <laughs> <laughs> and if, if anyone uh, doesn't remember, this is, this is a little snatch of uh, Everything is Awesome. Now, people for the rest of the show might be watching it, but really they'll be singing that in their head. <laughs> yes, it's a very catchy song. It is, but now, so I'm told that you you do a cover version of yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, I did this, I played this character on Parks and Recreation, who was, uh, oh, thank you. He was like the, the front man for a terrible band called Mouse Rat. <laughs> and they basically just did really terrible, like, uh, frat boy rock music, and so I can add that twist to everything is awesome. So, now, I, there is a guitar. Can you play it on yeah, the guitar? Yeah, yeah, I'll play it okay, on the guitar. Okay, okay, okay. And what's a little, t a little tidbit of, of fun trivia, you, do, wait, do your guests know who your, do, you, do they know who the musical guest is? Yes. Okay, so I can say that Shaka Khan is here. Yes. And that's pretty exciting, right? Yeah. And this capo uh, is, belongs to the guitarist, for Shaka Khan, <gasps> but I'm not gonna use it, I'm just gonna put it on the end. <laughs> and you that, uh, <laughs> Shaka Khan's guitarists have the same capo, it's no big deal. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh. 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 Oh.
Everything is awesome. <laughs> Everything is cool when you're part of a team. Everything is awesome. Fitting <laughs> in is my dream. It's like that. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. A really beautiful guitar. It's nice, isn't it? Gibson, Gibson J200, awesome guitar. Is that a really nice guitar? This is a really nice guitar. Oh. This is a Gibson J200, and it's a really special guitar. Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash, they played... They is played. it yours? No, no, this is just the, your set guitar, and they, and, they, and they pointed it out to me, and I just really like this guitar. It's a really nice guitar. Well, Thank you, I get to keep it. Like okay. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, when I say I like something, people give it to me. <laughs> it's, really nice. it's, it's not mine. Instagram. No, it's Instagram. mine. <laughs> There. Uh, now, we should also big up uh, Elizabeth Banks, your next uh, project. Have you, you finished Charlie's Angels now? We finished shooting Charlie's Angels and we're editing it now, yes. I'm, I'm, I am doing another Charlie's Angels movie, yeah. And you've directed this Thank and... You. Yeah. 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 yeah! Yes, I directed it, I produced it. Yeah, that's us. They're, those are the new angels. <laughs> oh. Bella Polinska and Naomi Scott are both Brits. Sir Patrick Stewart is also in the movie. He's a Brit. Sam Claflin, who's a Brit, is in the movie. Yeah. A lot of Brits are in the movie, actually. What? That's, yeah. Yeah, Why and then not? me and Kristen yeah. Stewart. Yeah. Paul I get the call. <laughs> 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 Number two. But so here's the thing. Uh, Elizabeth Banks, you, you know, you do all these things. You produce, you direct, you act, you write. But I don't think we've had this before, uh, where someone is come on the show and you invented a board game. Like not just invented it, it got made. Yeah, uh, yes, that is true. What? Do I yes, have it? Do I, I have it? Yes, here it is. Yes. Well, I was, um, yeah, when I was getting married. Yep, yeah, that's it. Unveiled. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a bachelorette party yeah. game. It's a, you know, it's a party in a box, guys. Yeah. Um, but no, but like, it is an actual board. Look, there's yeah. a, there's our board. No, and yeah. I think the pieces are little shoes, right? Uh, yeah. Let me check. Uh, I think so. Little shoes. Yeah, little yeah. shoes. Uh huh. And yeah. There's dice. Yeah. So how did this come about? So I, I, you know, you know, when you're in that time of your life when everyone you know is getting married. I was in that time. I was probably, you know, going to 15 weddings or something. And I, I. I'm pretty good at throwing a bachelorette party, so I was throwing bachelorette parties all the time, which is what a bachelorette or hen party, I think you guys call them, right? Yeah, you call hen, hen party, party, yeah, here? yeah. And we would do like a scavenger hunt or, you know, all kinds of things. And, and one day, I, I don't know, I, it, I, we met a guy who made um, erotic games, <laughs> like for a business. And he basically thought he could um, sell a, a bachelorette party game too with, that had a little, some naughty erotic thing elements to it. So, yeah, it was like a way to organize a bachelorette evening around a game night. So it was like early game night stuff. Yeah, those are the cards. Yeah, the, how the, does the, the game work? I mean, yeah. You can read some out. I'm not okay. They're quite out there. I, uh, I yeah. cannot believe that you found this game, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. So some of these cards, so you have like a say card, which is something that you have to, that you say out loud. So, um, oh my God. I. I don't know if I can even ask. Yeah, them. ask. It's okay. <laughs> I don't think I can ask this. Why not? Hang on, let's have a look. Okay, okay. Uh, you know what? I'll ask. Um, all right, Jennifer. This oh, is a no. horrible idea. <laughs> this, this says this is a full question. Okay, and here's the thing. You can. It says you can play or pass. So you don't have to answer this. You okay. can pass this if you want to. Okay. The question is. Do you spit or swallow? <laughs> if this question makes no sense to you, return to start. <laughs> Do you like to play or pass? <laughs> Don't think about it. Yeah, I can... Just pass. You can, you can be talking about champagne. I mean, you could be talking about wine or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I would never spit out wine. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Big answer. So yeah. that's a say, and then there's away. Okay, so away cards. These are this, yeah. the. This is the part of the evening where you leave the house because you can't have a decent bachelor party all at home. You have right. to like leave the house. You gotta, you know, go, you know, see the Magic Mike show or something and meet some meet some dudes. Right. So an away card might involve, for instance, um, all right, you ready? This is gonna be. This will be for you, Chris. Okay. So if you pick this card. You, you need to go find this and, uh, and, and do it. This is the away card, okay? <laughs> Read out loud oh. what it says. Kiss or rub a bald head. There you go. <laughs> kiss or rub a bald head. So you have to go There's kiss one. or rub a bald There's head. There's one right there. There's one right there. Yeah. Yeah! <laughs> oh, 
Joey's daughter. Uh, that, yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> but then I'm going to reissue this game oh. now. Well done, Matt. Matt. Thank you. I yeah. know. Apparently, 25 years on, I'm going to start selling games finally. Yeah. <laughs> what a fun game. Do you have a, yeah, really you have a store full of these? At home? <laughs> <laughs> finally, yeah, I can yeah, shift yeah. these games. <laughs> uh, very good. Uh, right, Jennifer Connolly. Jennifer Connolly, you bring us a new fantasy epic, uh, Alita: Battle Angel. This comes out on the 6th of February, and this is part. This is James Cameron. So he kind of co-wrote it and conceived it, yeah. and then Robert Rodriguez. Uh, directed. directed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And visually, it kind of... Because it, 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 the source material is a manga... Uh, yeah, and there are many, many volumes of it. So he had... Um, James had gone through and sort of figured out the focus for the film and which part of the story he wanted to tell. Um, so um, Christoph Waltz, who's amazing, he um, plays Dr. Ito Dyson. He um, kind of... A, he finds Alita's character um, in this kind of garbage heap and puts her together and, and it's kind of becomes a sort of father-daughter relationship. As he and then who are you? I play a woman named Shirin, who is a doctor who is building cyborgs, um, who is kind of the, um, she is, uh, yeah, what yeah, she do? Yeah. yeah, I don't think you're serious. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she's kind of um, an antagonist at the beginning of the film. Mm. Look how grumpy mm. she is. She's super grumpy. <laughs> and um, we realize there's a reason why she's so grumpy about Alita. And um, <clears throat> we come to understand that she's just kind of been burying this grief that she has, and ultimately she, she kind of uh, saves the day. All right, well, let's uh, look at the clip. This gives you a, a kind of uh, an idea of how epic this film is and, and you in it. Here we go. Alita, you are someone very special. Kid! Not just the teenage girl. Hey, what's your problem? I was surprised to see her in her daughter's body. You were supposed to have destroyed that years ago. I'm not your daughter. I don't know what I am. I do. You have the most advanced weapon ever. But that's just a shell. It's not bad or good. That part's up to you. I don't understand how she could create such power. She's just a girl. I do not stand by in the presence of evil. She's the last of her kind. She's threatening the natural order of things. Tonight is not a game. It is a hunt. I need you to destroy the girl called Alita. Ooh. Ago, it's it's pretty epic. I have to say, it's really impressive. You know, because we like a movie like that. We do the stuff that we do, and then we leave, and then a year later, you see this film. They put all this work into it. It's extraordinary. Yeah, the it's 3D really is, is really good what as well. They can do yeah. now the technology, and I saw it with. Um, I went to see it with my husband and and my our teenage son, our son Stellan, who's 15, and who's like. Really good. He was like, I was like, so is it good? Is the action good? Is it? And he's like, it's so badass. It's really great. And so <laughs> that was great. Good. Yeah, really, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have to mention that uh, Top Gun Two. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer Connelly is in yeah. Top Gun Let's Two. Go. Uh, are you making it? Super are you making awesome. it now? Yeah, they're still filming. I have a little bit more filming to do. Okay. Yeah. Tell us something. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, tell us everything. Yeah, tell us. <laughs> We've got the picture. Right. They've released this picture. Look how happy On the you are. Oh, yeah. 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 That's not a day at work. You're like, yay! Look at me. That's so awesome. It's so much fun. Are you it's a pilot? Are you? Uh... I'm not a pilot. I'm a sailor. Ooh. Yeah. Navy I girl. Sail. I'm a sailor. I used to race boats in oh. the film. I can give you that. Okay. We have a sailing scene. Okay. What a sailing scene. There's really is. Mm -hmm. Is there like they're a sexy doing... song on the boat, mm -hmm. maybe, that you and Tom get down you know, to? You know, like a sexy theme song. Yeah, like yeah. a sexy get, theme they're... song. It's funny. Highway to the danger zone? <laughs> no, that's not a sexy one. Uh, there's going to be, I think there's, there might be, yeah, there's going <gasps> to definitely be a sexy theme song. Is, <laughs> is the boat rocking? can't tell you what it is. Is the boat rocking? Yeah. <laughs> Guys, come on. This is too much. <laughs> no one's going to know. No one's going to know. It's tell anybody. No one watches this. Well, just so you know, I, I almost believed it. Everyone in 
in the, everyone in the world is gonna in, is gonna want to see this movie, and I, for one, am gonna be right in the front of the line. I cannot wait to see it. It's gonna be so awesome. Yes. yes. Thank you. Oh. And talking of kind of the, you know the big epic things, we were, we mentioned uh, Labyrinth. Now, how old were you in when you actually made Labyrinth? Fourteen, I think. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 It's one of those films everyone loves Labyrinth, but you you don't watch it. You have you have, have you ever watched it? I don't it? go back and watch. I mean, do you guys go back and watch? But this is on telly all the time. Do you never kind of go, oh, you know what? I'm going. I don't. You know, it's like seeing old pictures of yourself. You know, you look back at them and you just kind of cringe a little bit. <laughs> But the movie's great. I mean, if I look like you at 14, I would look at that all day long. <laughs> right? Chris, right. Want, Chris wants in on it. A 14 year old Chris would definitely want in on that, right? I, I, first of all, I watch my stuff all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I just watch a box set of Marvel movies on the way over here. <laughs> But at 14, were you sort of too young to be a fan of David Bowie? I, I was not cool enough. There were 14-year-olds <laughs> who were definitely got it. Like, my best friend at the time, Gretchen Crary, she was super cool. She had, like, a wedge haircut. She was so cool, and she had posters, and she really got it. I was not... It was probably a good thing I wasn't that cool. Because, Paul, what's a, did and you know David Bowie? Uh, no, I didn't. I've always been a uh, big fan of David Bowie. I, I think, you know, we, everybody talks about the, you know, reinventing himself, Ziggy Stardust, Aladdin Sane, and then his soul period. But for me, I, I think he was just a brilliant songwriter. I don't think you need to worry about all that nonsense, you know. That but he was a he fan was of brilliant you. Song. But he was a fan of you. Well, I don't like to name drop, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> no, I read a couple of interviews with Tony Visconti, and he said that you know he really liked these two shows that I'd done, and that is a, I, I genuinely I'm not going to name drop, maybe, but mm -hmm. that one, yeah, it was it was really a, you know. But there was you know, one, one thing. but one character, yeah, in one character in particular that he liked, wasn't there? Well, I think you know he's, he did an impersonation of, of one character that I used to do, yeah. So this was the teenager. No, it was the other guy who said, you know, everything's brilliant. And, you know, ah, isn't Graham Norton fantastic? You know, the way he just talks to people is brilliant, isn't he? <laughs> just drinks his wine, you know, and then pushes people out of that chair. <laughs> fantastic! <laughs> <laughs> like, I just used to do these characters and they said everything was brilliant. You know, like, things are, aren't they? Telephones. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant! <laughs> He's very enthusiastic. But, but then, weirdly, you, you probably know this exists, but mm. there, there was a documentary of uh, Dave Bowie on tour, and there was kind of, you know, backstage bits, and there's a clip of him doing... Really bad impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> How churlish. <laughs> Here he is doing a very bad impression of you. Sure does. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Oh, That's flashing great. badge is brilliant. They just stick on your ear and they go, wow, 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 brilliant. Really, yeah. fantastic. Brilliant. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. That's an amazing wow. thing to have. Wow. How cool is that? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty, that's that's pretty amazing. Really amazing. You're better, like that, Right. Uh, Paul Whitehouse, ladies and gentlemen, can now be seen in... Well, not now. Oh, no, soon will be seen. Well, you'll be London's... seen here. Yes, oh, I, 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 am here. I can see yes. you now. But soon you will be in London's glittering West End uh, playing Granddad and Only Fools and Horses, the musical. It's at the Theatre Royal Haymarket. It previews from the 9th of February, opening properly on the 20th. And now, this was John Sullivan's... The, the late, great John Sullivan. This was his project. Yeah, John Sullivan started work on the musical uh, and... It was quite a long while after the series had finished, and... This, by the way, Only Fields Horses is a very famous uh, British sitcom, and John yeah, Sullivan... Yeah, so it ran for about 20 years, off and on, and uh, it's, uh, it's sort of deeply embedded in the, in the psyche of uh, Britain. It's very well-loved, so it's quite a daunting thing to take on. But because John had started work on it, and it was his brainchild, and Only Fools is, you know, is his baby, it's, uh, it, that sort of legitimises what we've done, and... He started work with Chaz Hodges as well. Of Chaz and Dave. Yeah, yeah, sadly, you know, sadly, John died very early in the... You know, as he was starting to write the musical. So we only had a few little brief sort of jottings and ideas. We, um, we took the plot of uh, an episode called Dates, which was John Sullivan's favourite, where Del meets Raquel. He's at a crossroads in his life, which you have to be in a musical. <clears throat> you have to be, you know, somewhere. Sorry, I've got man flu, by the way. 
You're right. I have some sympathy. Oh. Can I, <laughs> oh. no, I was going to say, if that doesn't work, I've got half a colon. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a musical. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so we do... <laughs> He's not joking. No. <laughs> no, it's true. <laughs> Dude, okay, we're on a show with a man who's got half a cola. <laughs> it's a semi-cola. <laughs> like it. Very good. Nice. Yeah. Um, but are the songs very Chas and Dave, or are they...? No, there's a, there's a mixture. There's a couple. There's one or two that are very... I mean, Grandad does sing a song about where have all the Cockneys gone, which... But I did, <laughs> the Cockney diaspora. <laughs> <laughs> I did flog it to Chaz. It was like taking Coles to Newcastle, cos I said, Chaz, I've got this idea for a song. Basically, it's a Chaz and Dave song, you know. <laughs> some went awoke, you know, I'm not joking. Some went barking, oh, I'm not larking. Some kept walking right past talking. A lot of them went to Kent. Oi! <laughs> 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 And so we, there's, there's a few knees uppy things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. But then, you know, we like to think that what we're doing is a celebration of only fools and horses. You know, it's not, it's not Sondheim. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. people are surprised that you're involved in the musical. You do come from a very musical background. Yeah, yeah. I do. My mum was a singer. She sang with the Welsh National yeah. Opera and uh, she won the Golden Voice of Wales. So. And then you had a pop career. Well, not really. Well, you were in a band. Yeah, but well, that's, that's not a career, is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a picture of you, so you must... Like, somebody took a picture oh. of you, so you must be doing OK. Then, <laughs> so that's you there. Yeah. Uh, right, yeah? Really and this is Charlie Higson. Yeah. When, when would this be? Oh, God. Um, that would probably be in about 1978. And what were you called? I'm not going to say it. Do you really <laughs> want me to? I think we've... We said yeah. spit or swallow. You OK, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. The Right Hand Lovers, we were called. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right. and... <laughs> but here is the thing. Not the only pop star on the couch. I turn to you, Jennifer Connelly. What? Yeah, you've topped the charts, haven't you? No! Yes, you did! No! You did in Japan! You didn't... Were you number one in Japan? What? Are you huh? number one in Japan? No. Are you Japan? You're making yes. Japan. You're making <laughs> Japan. Oh, right. You were there, weren't you? No, I'm not making this up. What? Um, okay, so here's the story. <laughs> <laughs> so is this a terrible yeah, story? No, no, no. No, I was forced I'm, I'm so into not, a, I'm not, pop no, I'm not a singer. I had no aspirations to be a singer. Everyone in my family is musical except for me, really. And I like the only thing I ever do is in our barn. And um, on New Year's Eve. So Except how did the Japanese? For, yes. How did this happen? I, when I was a kid, I did commercials in Japan, and I did a commercial for Panasonic, and I had to sing the jingle in Japanese. <gasps> and somehow, also around this time, I was about 14, 15. I vaguely remember recording a song that was somehow involved with the... I don't know how it happened, yeah, but I, I think do it was... have recollection of being in a recording yeah, studio. Yeah, because I think it was, it, it, was, it was Technics was the name of the, yeah. the product. And, uh, and but I think it was released as a single, this song. I think it might yeah. have been. And it was a hit. So modest. <laughs> if I had a number one song in Japan, it would be the first thing I'd tell people. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in a... Uh, so this is, this is the ad. This is the ad. Uh, I've never Connery. heard this. Have you wow. never heard Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> and, um... You've never heard your number one <laughs> hit in Japan? <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, awesome. So, so uh, this is Jennifer Connelly singing, advertising this Technics product. And it's kind of like a sound system. <laughs> and it's very special. And it has this, it has this feature. I'm not sure how useful this feature <laughs> is. But uh, I, anyway, here it is. <laughs> This is Jennifer. You've never seen that? Yeah. But, 
But it's that... like a hi-fi that's also a phone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... That calls Jennifer Connelly. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's amazing. That's really funny. That is cool. Do you, wow. Do you know what you were saying? I don't remember what it was. Uh, not. I don't remember. Who speaks Who's Japanese school? here? Anybody? Anyone? Anybody? Was it something about the pear and the bowl? Because that yeah. was the only thing I didn't understand <laughs> in that it's commercial. The girl from Labyrinth. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it's, there's some pears in a bowl. Hit this radio. It's and you nice. will talk to me. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll be great. Yeah. Now talking of singing, uh, we know because you've you've already sung quite a lot tonight, Chris, that you you enjoy singing. But there's one song you now no longer sing, and I, I believe it was a favorite of yours. Remind me, uh, the man uh, in the mirror. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Chris is really good at karaoke. Ah, uh, well, Come on. listen, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't easily embarrass, but about probably I don't know when I first moved to Hollywood, some you know couple couple decades ago, I loved going to karaoke, and I don't know what happened. The stars aligned one night. And I sang Man um, in the Mirror by Michael Jackson. But I didn't just sing it, I sang it, you know? <laughs> and I thought, okay, I, I know I have my song. I'll sing this in karaoke for the rest of my life because I brought down the house, is how I remembered it. <laughs> so the next week I went to do karaoke at a different bar and uh, I was chatting up this girl. Her name was Marina. Marina, if you're watching, hello. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I knew I had Man in the Mirror in my pocket. Yeah. You know, so I was just yeah. playing coy, talking about karaoke. I might, I said, you know, I might sing. I don't know, maybe not. <laughs> and uh, got up, requested the song. She was watching me, and I said, this song's from Marina. <laughs> and uh, the, the tune came on, and I remember it was like, that sounds, that feels like a little bit of a different key than what I'm used to, but I'll try that. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, bing, 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 uh-huh. And I was like, I'm gonna make a ch no change, I'm gonna make a change. Oh, once in my life. And I was like, oh God, oh no, this is not working. <laughs> and Man in the Mirror is a very long song <laughs> if you're not nailing it. And I was like, Gonna feel real good. <laughs> and this guy, this guy goes, you suck. <laughs> uh, uh, and so I'm just, sweat, I'm sweating now telling this story. <laughs> and I have to make it through the song and sometime around the 15th, -na 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 Marina left with that guy. Oh! You suck guy. You suck guy. Oh! That was polygon. Yeah, but... Yeah. Very good. Uh, right, it's time for music. This lady is a ten-time Grammy award-winning legend who sold over 70 million records worldwide. Now, after 12 years, she's back with a brand new album performing like sugar. It is Shaka Khan! <laughs> Like sugar, like sugar, like sugar. 
Amazing, fantastic. Aren't they, br aren't they brilliant? So good. Uh, Shaka Khan, now, uh, all day I've just been going, Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan. <laughs> Do people... I've been doing it for a week. <laughs> my name has an effect on people. But does everyone come yeah. up and go, yes. Shaka Khan? Yes, they don't just say my name once, <laughs> either. <laughs> if, you know, if a uh, total stranger, you know, comes up and says that, Oh, Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to time warp or something. Else. <laughs> <laughs> it's very weird that you have a, you, a catchy name. Yeah. yeah, it's percussive. It is. You know, it is percussive. It's, it's, it's really, I think, what the... <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of things. OK. <laughs> Uh, so that really is. that track that is off your album Hello Happiness. Yeah. Yes. And uh, now, Hello Happiness. Uh, this is your first. Al is it twelve years? Yes, it's been twelve years. Wow. Here's the deal. I've, uh, all the music I've, I've ever done, um, it's gone into the dance halls. <laughs> yeah. I've never gone into the studio with the intent of doing um, you know, a CD that has to do with dance. I always thought, no. Disco? Are you kidding? <laughs> so, this time, since there are such great mixers out these days, yeah, yeah, some yeah. of these kids are just geniuses. And some of the older ones are, too. And I met uh, a middle-aged one and a <laughs> young one. <laughs> which really, I think, made, him, <laughs> made it really special, more special to me. And yes. plus, they're married. And oh. um, we did some great music together. We met in the studio, and uh, they did some great stuff. And I just couldn't resist it. I was like, this has got to go on. Yeah. And it was very easy. It was easy work. Oh, that's the best kind. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Wait, but I understand. The, the producers are married to each other? Yes. The middle-aged one yes. and the young one? Yes. They're married. Yes. So you were in, like, a thruple in the studio with yes. those two. I was having a thruple. Actually, a thruple or a fourth thruple. Oh, who was the fourth? fourth? There's a fourth one too. Well, well a trouble. Get a bold game out again. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why it's called Hello Happiness? Yeah. <laughs> and like sugar? Yeah. Is that not what I meant? Yeah, I like it. This yeah. is so like yeah, sugar. Like sugar. <laughs> Sugar. We had fun in the studio, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you did. <laughs> uh, Shaka Khan, the album Hello Happiness is out on February the 15th. It's so nice to have you back. Shaka Khan, everybody! <laughs> oh. 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 
right, that's really it. We'll be going just time for a visit to the big red chair. Who is there? Hello. Hello, guys. How's it going? I don't know. <laughs> I agree. That's a good call. That was what? a good call. With it. Yeah, None of us no. are getting younger, Chris. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, let's try another one. Here we go. I agree with that. Ah. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello, he's hanging on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your name? Nigel. Nigel, lovely. And uh, where are you from, Nigel? I'm from St Albans. Yeah. All right, what do you do? I try to sell renewable energy things. Oh, renewable energy, okay. Yeah. Worthy job, very good. Yeah. Uh, off you go with your story, Nigel. Uh, it was uh, August 97, on holiday with my family. We had a few drinks at lunchtime and I needed a wee on the way back for the hotel, so I jumped okay. over a, a fence. Lovely. Uh, started to have a number one, and I slipped on the gravel and went full frontal into a cactus. Ooh. I like it. Is that the yeah. end of your story? <laughs> no, no, size-wise oh. was quite impressive, but I wouldn't recommend it to anyone, but I had to go back to the hotel dressed in a sarong because I couldn't get my pants back up. <laughs> and my lovely wife spent a couple of hours Pulling out barbs <laughs> with tweezers. So, anyway. I know. Anyway. I, I, yeah. I, I, maybe maybe if you, I. If you can walk, you can walk. I can walk. Yeah. Thank you. Do you want to walk? I can now, yeah. yeah. Oh, do you want to walk? Or no, no, I don't want to walk. Be, you want to be flipped? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Time for you. If you'd like to have a go in the red chair yourself and tell your story, you can contact us via our website. This is their address. Uh, please say a huge thank you to all my guests. Shaka Khan! <laughs> Paul Whitehouse! <laughs> Jennifer Connolly! <laughs> Elizabeth Banks! <laughs> and Miss Chris Pratt! <laughs> Join me next week with musical guest Jack Severetti. After Chuatel Ejivore, comic genius Ricky Gervais, Oscar nominated Regina King, and the great Sir Patrick Stewart. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>